couple's infertile, it's usually assumed to be a woman's problem. The woman's usually the first person to go into the clinic to have a workup, and yet 40% of the infertility is due to a problem with the man. And in 90% of those cases, there's something to do with sperm count involved. So the idea of creating a home test that would help in the help couples identify male factor infertility early is really a kind of women's health care advance because it reduces the unnecessary testing of women. And you know, women are not just assumed to be at fault. The testis is a organ designed primarily for the production of sperm. And it's a place where a single round cell, much like every other cell in the body, transforms into a flagellated unicellular organism that's designed to survive in a world outside the body. The human genome holds the memory of unicellular life. And although we're, as an adult body, a multicellular organism comprised of complex tissues and different cell types contained in our DNA, contained in our genetic memory. We keep this ability to create a unicellular organism, just like the original unicellular organisms that floated in the primeval sea. A Dutchman named Anton von Leeuwenhoek built the first microscope and was the first person to look at uh, semen. The microscope was very crude, but he got the tail right and he got the head right and he saw little circular structures inside, inside the head. It was the first observation, you know, using the very first microscope. Ever since then, we've begun to get a, you know, a glimpse of how reproduction actually works. There are genes that are unique to the flagellum of the sperm. There are genes that are in the membrane of the, of the sperm. And these genes harken back to the earliest primitive organism. In fact, the proteins that are, that are encoded by these genes are not like the same molecules in the rest of the body. In fact, they're totally different. And growing out of that basic interest in what was really unique about the sperm, uh, came this idea of signature molecules, that there were molecules that were only found in sperm and not found anywhere else in the body, that these molecules could be uh, biomarkers or could be signatures of sperm. This was an era when vasectomy surgery was really taking off. And people were wondering whether vasectomy was safe. Honey, I'm talking about you getting a vasectomy. You, you, you lost my support. I thought you were talking about the tube tie-in thing. Well, I am talking about the tube tie-in thing, except it's your tubes. You can back up that clip ship right now. Honey, it is...
We developed probes for these called monoclonal antibodies. We used these to structure assays, which then could be used to measure these molecules. And you know, through this process, came up with uh, tests that could be applied to measure and detect sperm. and ovulation tests are you know little kits that uh, can be used in a home context to me measure uh, measure hormones the advent of a device like this does give women in the privacy of their own home the ability to determine the most common question about fertility and that is sperm numbers <laughs>